مستمرين بعد عم ناخذ الاسئله تبعكم عبر رقم التليفون 03007945 رح نرجع نجاوب على الاسئله يلي بنقدر نجاوب عليها بعد شوي بدي اذكر انه كان المفروض يكون معنا دكتور ناصر حداد رئيس ال بي اي بس لاسباب طارئه ما قدر يكون معنا وهلا رح نكمل مع الاستاذ وليد نصر وهو رئيس وحده التخطيط الاستراتيجي رح يحكي عن حاجات لبنان للغاز وكيفيه استخدامه محليا وللتصدير وايضا عن اسواق الغاز تفضل استاذ وليد ثانك يو باسل Good afternoon and thanks all for being here and uh, being positive to the invitation of the Petroleum Administration to participate in Lebanon's Petroleum Day. A big question arises on whether we have gas and we produce this gas, what will be done with this gas? A lot of discoveries are happening in the region and in other parts of the world, in Africa and the US and in Asia. So what What is the potential for the Lebanese gas within this global dynamics? I will have a global overview on gas, the national gas demand for Lebanon, our exploration and production policy that the Petroleum Administration has adopted, the gas production scenarios that we are working on in the administration, and the potential of export options. To start with, if we look at Earth, this is a photo taken by NASA, we see that a lot of power is needed for Earth. Most of the developing countries are still short on providing electricity and main basic services to their citizens. And this would give us a very straightforward picture on where gas and oil are consumed. And that's why we have three gas hubs in the world, which is the US, Europe, and Asia, which is basically mostly Japan, Korea, and parts of China. So there's a lot to be supplied, and the demand will be always increasing. The world population, as you know, is increasing rapidly. We are at 9 billion people today, and this is increasing every second. Sorry, 7 billion people. The consumption per capita is increasing, and with more developing countries having higher rates of income, the consumption rate will increase, and accordingly, the use of energy and the demand for energy will increase. This is all affecting our environment and causing more environmental degradation, which is causing losses in our natural resources that we are using them beyond the capacity of its regeneration, especially when we talk about non-renewable resources such as minerals and oil and gas. And this is also affecting the supply of energy globally. All of this dynamic is affected by policy, international policy affected by international conventions related to trade, to environment, to climate change. And it's also, of course, affected by economy in terms of recessions or progress in different economies in the world. So the world energy demand for oil and gas has more than doubled from 2000 until 2025 and it will increase more in 2040 going from around uh, 75, 75 uh, TCF in 2000 until 200, to reach around 200 in 2040. The international gas supply and demand map, uh, which is, uh, also shows, reflects the first image that I have seen and I have shown. The supply is not where the demand is. Uh, as you can see the red dots, we have the main demand for gas in the world, which is in the US, Europe, and in Asia. Whereas the most of the supply is in Russia, the Middle East, and parts of Africa, and sometimes in South America. So this dynamics is very interesting to see where the gas is demanded and where the gas is supplied, and the rules for gas, which is pipelines and LNG. So where do we stand now? Uh, in Europe, the latest Europe's energy strategy calls for diversification. And if we look at the supply of Europe today, we see that it is mostly from Norway and Russia. However, Europe is trying to get to diversify gas supplies, and new small players are coming in, such as Trinidad, Tobago, Egypt, Libya, and others. 81% of Europe's supply comes through pipelines, and 19% through energy. 
If we have a look at Asia and Japan, they have the same policy of diversification. Although some suppliers, some countries can supply more gas, however, Japan imports gas from very different countries. Again, if we look at South Korea, we see even more diversification with even smaller players coming in and South Korea importing gas from many different countries with smaller amounts. And this is the policy to ensure energy security, security of supply, and of course competition in terms of prices. If we look at the regional market, which is close to us, Turkey, with its economy that is uh, increasing year after year, the demand for gas is increasing also very rapidly to, deep, to reach 2.3 TCF in 2030. And uh, in Jordan, we have the same story of uh, uh, increased demand per year up to 2025. And this linear progression is relevant to almost all countries in the region. With Syria and Egypt, there are special cases now with the crisis in Syria and the situation in Egypt in terms of exploration and using their own gas and start importing some other gas. So what about Lebanon? Where do we stand and what gas do we need? We did some studies at the Petroleum Administration based on the energy policy of the Minister of Energy and Water and the different studies conducted by the Ministry and by some other ministries and uh, even companies and surveys done. So if we look at the total energy demand for Lebanon, uh, we see that we import 90% of the energy demand, which is equivalent to 119,000 barrels in 2012. And this is also increasing year after year. Only 10% is produced locally from renewable sources and other sources, such as hydropower and some solar and uh, other means. Most of our energy goes to electricity to Yuma, where we produce electricity with 39%, and for private electricity generation, 10%. So we have around 50% used for energy production, for electricity production specifically, in our power plants. 32% goes for transport, and only 2% goes to industries because the industrial sector is not very heavy in that moment, not very demanding for energy. We, calculate, we did some calculations if we want to convert our power generation into gas, and this is the policy of the Minister of Energy and Water to convert most of the power plants we use that use heavy fuel today to use natural gas in the future. The electricity demand uh, in 2030 will be around 32 terawatt hour, which is a big increase from the current uh, number that we have. The estimations for the increase that the Minister of Energy has used is 3.2% increase per year, and this is based on three variables, which is population growth in Lebanon, GDP growth, and weather conditions. With this modeling, we reached this number for electricity need for the country. If we want to convert our energy supply from heavy fuel, which is costly and causing a deficit of $2 billion every year on the national budget, we would need 0 0.196 TCF per year up to 2030. And based on the interpretation we have of the data, this number of gas, which is 0 0.2 TCF approximately, is very feasible to extract from our offshore. If we look at the power plants that we currently have, the power plants of Deir Amman and Zahrani are already equipped with closed cycle gas turbines so they can use gas immediately. And actually this was planned and we got some gas from Egypt for a very short period of time. Now they are operating on heavy fuel oil which is causing a lot of deficit and inefficiency in production. Uh, the power plants of Tir and Baalbek are also gas turbines that can be used today. So if we have our own gas in 2014, we can generate 65% of the electricity from gas without having new power plants in place. The steam engines of Zook and GE are already obsolete almost. They will be used as backup for, for energy supply in the future. And the new plant power plants would be designed to work using gas. The second sector that we looked at is are the industries. Uh, we cooperated with the Ministry of Industry. We used their data and their supply. So we look at uh, 
the currently the Lebanese industry uses light fuel oils, heavy fuel oils, diesel and LPG. All these can be replaced by gas, of course, gradually, and industrialists face the main burden, which is their energy bill. Lebanese industries cannot compete much because they have a very high energy bill, and this is causing higher production costs. So with the supply of gas, this can be enhanced, and they will have more competitive ability to develop and grow. 58% of the supply of electricity to industries comes from LDL, whereas 18% is produced by the industries themselves using these types of expensive uh, fuel types that, will, that is already increasing. Uh, the survey of the Minister of Industry, we took it and we distributed it over Lebanon, and we see that around 70% of the industries is distribu distributed among the coastal line. With the planned coastal gas pipeline of the Minister of Energy and Water, these industries can be supplied directly with gas. And this would, would, have, would, uh, would have a sustainable and secure source of energy for these industries, which is cheaper and cleaner for the environment. The main categories of industries that can use this gas are food products, metal, metal products, chemical products, rubber and plastics, paper making and printing. And those are the main industries that we have in Lebanon that currently form the major, the majority of the industrial sector. So the total demand for gas, if we take power generation and industries, is 7 BCM by 2025, which is equivalent to 0.25 TCF, without accounting for the commercial and residential use for gas, because it, said it was a bit tough to calculate for the time being how much gas will be needed for the residential and commercial sector. We will be working on this sector in the coming month. The exploration and production policy that the administration has proposed to the Ministry and to the Council of Ministers is composed on four pillars which would uh, sustain our economy and sustain our resources. First is energy security. The main priority is to supply the national demand. And for that, we need to build the required local infrastructure in terms of power plants, distribution pipelines, and so forth. The second pillar is long-term investment. As we saw was explaining, the financial system is built on a long-term basis. Oil and gas companies invest for long periods of time. So we have to have good terms and conditions for the exploration and production agreement and the good export policy for these companies to come and invest in Lebanon for a period of 30 years or more. Sustainability is a big priority for the FBA. Uh, all the regulations in place call for prudent production with stand health, safety, and environmental guidelines and regulations that some of them is already prepared and others are being prepared right now. And we have a session later on on this aspect. In terms of revenues for future generations, the, the low cost to establish the sovereign wealth fund. And at the same time, we designed a licensing strategy which is gradual, which is awarding a minimum number of blocks in every bid round so that we keep the resources for the future generations and we learn more on managing our resources in a good manner. The gas production scenarios, we took based on the geological interpretations that we have from the 3D seismic data on our offshore. We took four blocks out of the ten blocks and we calculated the total dry gas based on the 3D seismic surface. And to have not to raise high expectations, we took a very conservative approach in estimating the resources we have so that we don't get disappointed in the future. So we calculated from the total dry gas available the feasible dry gas that can be extracted. So we took the P50 probability of finding gas and we took out of the P50 all the structures that have a probability of success of less than 10%. So we only took structures with more than 10% probability of success. In four blocks, we get 32.9 TCF. We did four scenarios for our planning based on a very conservative approach of having only 5 TCF, 10 TCF, 15, and 25 TCF as a best case scenario, which in our opinion is is doable based on the seismic data that we have. To do that, if we have only 5 TCF, we can supply 100% of our 
national demand up to the year 2045, which is really reasonable for Lebanon without any export. Then we have to decide maybe we don't need all that amount because the economy is not ready to receive gas in all its sectors, so we may use 50%. For a scenario of 10%, we can supply 50% uh, of our demand for year 2048, and then the rest can be exported with the amounts available. With a scenario of 15 TCF, we can supply 100% of our national demand up to year 2048, which is very reasonable in Lebanon, and this would have a very high impact on the economy, on the productive sectors, and on the livelihood of the Lebanese, and definitely on the national revenues and the deficit that we already have. If we take the best case scenario, based on four blocks only, I'm talking, it's 25 TCF, and we have, uh, we can supply 100% up to year 2050 with 16 TCF for export, which also has a lot of benefits to the economy. We did some conceptual development plans for some of the blocks. And an example of, uh, of a structure here, we have it which is at a depth of 3,000 to 4,000 meter, meters of, of uh, seawater. Um, with a distance of 50 kilometers away from the offshore, when developing four wells, the total investment cost, which is the capex, ranges between 2 and 2.5 billion dollars. And then, based on the simulations that we saw, has explained, we can calculate the revenues for the state, and depending on the percentages of export and national demand use. These development plans are being now prepared by the LPA for planning and for discussions with oil and gas companies once we have the licensing round completed. The infrastructure needed for our national gas demand, definitely we need the gas processing plant. And this is something also doable and the areas for that are available in the public lands of Tripoli and Zahrani and other places. We need the gas fired power plants and this is the plan of the Minister of Energy and Water to build these plants. Of course, we need transmission lines and pipelines. The coastal gas pipeline is already planned, and now an EIA is being conducted for this, uh, prepared to be conducted for this pipeline. And in the future, if Lebanon decides to make the best use of its gas, we need to expand our industries and go into energy, high energy demand industries like petrochemicals and others, to increase the national demand and make better use of the economic benefit of the gas that we have. For export options, definitely we can use pipelines and LNG based on the amounts of discoveries that we may have. For the export routes, Lebanon is very well placed uh, geographically compared to other countries. So we have two options of gas pipelines and LNG. Being in the region, in the Mediterranean, connected to other countries, we are already connected to the Arab gas pipeline. So this pipeline can be used to reach Egypt and supply Syria, Jordan and Egypt with the Lebanese gas. But this needs to be done quickly because Jordan and Egypt are already signing agreements with other countries and suppliers to get their gas. Another option is to connect to Turkey through Syria, and if the Syria situation still is not uh, acceptable to have a pipeline, we can have an offshore pipeline from Lebanon to Turkey to supply the European Union through the Turkish network and then through the European established network. For, for LNG, depending of course on the size of discoveries, we have the LNG plants in Egypt connected through the Arab gas pipeline, so without any additional investment, we can use the LNG plants in Egypt and export it through the LNG plants there. Of course, the priority is to have our own LNG plant if the resources we have are already big enough to do that. And with that, we can supply the Asian markets and the European market. And in Europe, we can see the red dots where we have regasification units, and most of the European countries on the Mediterranean, they are equipped with these regasification units to receive energy from all over the world. 
Of course, another option, if, if Cyprus goes on with its plans to have their own LNG and we don't have enough resources to build our own LNG, we can discuss that with Cyprus and have a common LNG plan and also supply the Asian market and the European market. This is a very brief overview on the potential for export and national demand. Of course, this doesn't go without challenges. We are in a region with a lot of geopolitics and a lot of challenges, and especially when it's related to oil and gas, pipelines, export options. So all of these plans depend on the geopolitics of the region and the policies of the governments in these countries. The national governance and regulations related to gas exploration, production, and export options can be a challenge if it is not planned well and good decision-making process is being conducted. Gas markets around the globe in terms of demand and supply and pricing is also very dynamic and changing and the uh, more late we are, we don't know what will happen with the prices and the options that we may have. And of course, regulating the pace of operations is always a big challenge, especially for us now, as you all know, with concluding the licensing round. However, continuous effort is the key to unlocking our potential, and this is what we are working on, and we would like you to support us in that. Thank you. هلا هيدا بس از ان اكزامبل يعني حصل مع 
a tento ke stavis. Obrtevi obrtevi expenses za razvoj se ne rekla na naše sanove. These are estimation based on our best assumptions. The young exercise had a two million on a project. This is the evaluation to best the standard economic model and the ranking is shaking now with saving. Obrtevi the prices book are key capital expenditures and operating expenses in the end but we have that as the machine when it's the bad and we give it it can be the that is not just as much petroleum produced as part of their cost but the thing is why we enjoy our money because this is an assumption or an estimation so i'll tell you how do you incentivize the contractor to reduce costs with such hard factor كيف بتحفز Sovereign 
يعني مش مش هيك انا وحده بتعملها هيدي التفكير مجلس الوزراء لازم يعملها كسياسه استعمال الموارد البتروليه هل احنا رح نستعملها للانفستمنت مثل ما هو السوفرين ويلث فاند بيشتغل والانترست بنستعمله بالانفستمنت بالايكونوميك سيكتور هذا الشيء بيعطي الافاده للايكونومي بس الايكونومي يكبر بيطلع تاكسز اكثر وندفع فيهم هيدي وان Another approach is to understand the percentage of the revenue that is secured from part of the debt. Every time there are advantages and disadvantages, there is a need to consider the solution of the revenue.